Hello, my name is Moving Cat, and welcome to my first impressions of the 2023 fall event. The event has just started on beta, so it is time for me to check it out and give you my initial thoughts on it. Now, the way I'll do this video is that I will first go through all the buildings, and there are a lot of them, way too many of them, uh, and then I will go over the mechanics. Now, this uh, screen here might look a little bit familiar, and that is because the mechanics are the same, or not exactly, but pre very similar to the wildlife event mechanics. There are some minor tweaks, and I will talk about those later on in the video. Before I go over that, though, let's talk about buildings and new rewards. So, the first thing you might notice, silver upgrade. That's right, not only do we have a golden upgrade, we also have a silver upgrade. So the way it works is that you get the main building to level 9, then you can upgrade it with the silver upgrade to level 10, and then from level 10 to level 11 with the golden upgrade. Uh, probably no surprise what I think about it, but it is what it is, and fortunately it's not too difficult to get it fully leveled. So let's go through the buildings, starting with the level 9 of the main building, the Autumn Vineyard. So the level 9 building, it, it gives some attack, both for your attacking and defending army. Uh, it, it gives between 26 and 30%, which is not that big of a spread actually. That's uh, actually a very low spread, which is interesting. Um, it also uh, gives some coins and supplies, some forge points between 17 and 21, depending on your age. It gives 70 goods and 5 fragments of the silver upgrade kit. Uh, you need 150 of those, which means that after 30 days, you will have a full uh, silver upgrade kit. So that's one way to get it, which is really nice. Um, and I guess I'll just skip ahead a little bit. Once you get to the silver upgrade here, you can see that this one produces fragments of the golden upgrade kit. So you don't actually need to pick up either the silver or golden upgrade from the event itself. Uh, if you pick up no fragments from the event, it will take you 30 days to get the silver upgrade and another 30 to get the golden upgrade, which I think is perfectly fine. And now in the grand practice here, you can get both silver and golden uh, upgrade fragments. Uh, most likely not a full uh, of either from the event itself, but you can get fragments which will lower that time a little bit. Anyway, back to the building, I was not, wasn't completely done. In addition to that, it gives some higher age blueprints, which is interesting. Uh, I don't quite know exactly how it works. Um, if it's the age above, or if it's all your, the ages above you, or exactly how it works, I don't know, but uh, it's interesting enough. don't really care too much myself, but could be nice. And it also has a random production uh, at level 9. It can give either a fragment of the Shroom Throne or the Granny's Aurora, uh, what's it called? Apple, uh, Granny Aurora's Apple Tree. So those are two more new buildings, both of which require 100 fragments to get. Uh, which, uh, yeah, so let's go through those buildings. Um, actually, no, before that, uh, let me just uh, skip through the, the silver upgrade, because it's just the same stats, just higher values. So the golden, same thing here, same stats, but higher values. So it gives up to, uh, well, up to, where is it? up to 42% attack for attacking army. Uh, it, the building itself is 3 by 7 it does require a road, uh, so that means it gives up to 42 attack, it has 21, uh, it yeah, takes up 21 tiles of space, so without any roads, up to 2% attack, if you include roads, just above 2% attack per tile, uh, which is definitely very nice. Um, it's not... Um, the absolute best, I think we've seen better recently, but it's definitely a very good. Uh, well above the uh, fall event, for example, which was the <laughs> one of the best for ages. Uh, it also gives a lot of forge points, a lot of goods, 10 higher age blueprints. And here you get three, uh, each of the fragments for the Shroom Throne um, or Granny Aurora's Apple Tree. So, let's talk about those two buildings. 
Uh, starting with the Granny Aurora's Apple Tree, this one gives a little bit of attack and defense for your defending army. Uh, in total, uh, it gives up to four of each, which is definitely very nice for a one by one building. It does require a road, which is a little bit uh, weird for a one by one building, uh, but it's not something we haven't seen before, so it probably intended. Now this building gives three fragments of the Cider Garden, so yet another building, uh, which, uh, uh, if I go back to the previous screen here, you can see here. So the Cider Garden, this is a 2x2 two two building, and considering it is a 2x2 two two building, it gives a lot of rewards, a lot of stats, very high stats. So, uh, it gives up to 9% attack for attacking army and 13% defense for attacking army. So, up to a combined 22 attack per uh, um, for your attacking army from a 2x2 two two building that does not require a road that is for 5.5 uh, five yeah, attack per tile, which is really, <laughs> really a lot. It also gives some attack for your defending army. It gives some forge points and, interestingly, it gives five light units of your current age and one light unit of the uh, next age. Um, or a 50-50 chance between those. So either five uh, light units from your age or one light unit from the next age, which is really interesting. And uh, if you are in the final age, you will instead get either three current light era uh, light units uh, or three rogues which is also nice but uh, but yeah now it is specifically the light unit uh, which i don't really think is the main un unit in a lot of ages i can't really think of uh, one where it is the main unit uh, but there's definitely some nice use for this i think especially early on uh, i think having the next uh, age light unit will help a decent amount on the continent map and so on uh, but I think at one point, probably not that big of a deal. It uh, definitely would be a big, bigger deal with the likes of Heavy Unit, for example. Getting the Hover Tank in Age Early would be very nice. Um, but yeah, so definitely nice. don't think it's that uh, important compared to all the attack you get from the building. Anyways, that's only one half of the, <laughs> the uh, Fragments rewards you can get from the main building. Uh, you can also get the Shroom Throne, which in and of itself is also really nice. It gives up to uh, uh, up to 3% attack for attacking army and 4% defense for attacking army. So up to 7% attack, uh, combined attack from a 1x1 one one building. That's really nice. It also does require a road, which is, yeah, again, slightly annoying, but nothing you can't deal with. It also gives some goods and three fragments of the Jumpin' Pumpkin. So, we have yet another building, the Jumpin' Pumpkin. This one gives 11% attack in the future. It gives up to 13% attack for attacking army. Uh, again, it's a 2x2 two two building. Uh, it does require a road. Now, interestingly, it requires... Um, and well, it also gives attack and defense for attack for defending army and some supplies, but it requires both population and happiness to build it, which is interesting. And the reason it's not really apparent here in in game, but if we go to the announcement, the reason is that this is a production building. It is a production building that produces supplies, and to me. I think this makes it potentially the best building from the event. And uh, it took me a little bit to realize exactly how good this is, but hear me out. So we all need production buildings. We need production buildings to complete events. And many of us use the likes of blacksmiths to do this. These are small buildings, easy to place, but outside of using them for event, they're basically uh, useless. You don't really use, uh, need them. Uh, so you take up space just for the purpose of events without really gaining much in return. Uh, you also have the likes of slave builders, for example, which do return a little bit more in terms of goods. But for most players, that's also not really that important. 
So if you're able to replace your blacksmiths with the jumping, uh, jumping pumpkin, not only do you still have the same production or higher production, uh, I think, uh, I haven't really, yeah, higher production in most ages uh, for the same space, you also get all of these attack and uh, defense boosts, which is really nice. Now, another really interesting thing, um, I did a little bit of math. Uh, so here I have uh, a quick spreadsheet. Uh, so the way you produce these jumping pumpkins, it's a little bit back and forth, but uh, assuming you get the full building, which you will get uh, at least two months after the event, but once you have the uh, building at the final level, uh, you will get three fragments of the Shroom Throne every other day. So in other words, you need two months to produce one Shroom Throne. So every sec uh, two months, you will produce one of these. Now, once you have placed one of these Shroom Thrones, it produces three fragments of the Jumping Pumpkin. Uh, and in total, you need uh, 100 fragments to get the Jumping Pumpkin. So from each of these you have placed in your town, you produce one jumping pumpkin every month, roughly. Slightly above, but uh, for the sake of argument, roughly one per month. So if we run this quick exper experiment here. So uh, after the first month, you produce nothing. Uh, the second month, you are able to place your first shroom throne. The month after, you will get your first jumping uh, jump pumpkin. The month after that, you will get yet another Shroom Throne, uh, but the, and the first uh, Shroom Throne you placed will also produce another Jumping Pumpkin. But then the month after that, you have two Shroom Thrones, so you will get two additional Jumping Pumpkins. And then the next one, you will also get two additional ones, but you will also get an additional Shroom, <laughs> shroom Throne, and so on. And all of a sudden, you are producing a lot of these Jumping Pumpkins, and after a year, roughly, you're all the way up to 30 buildings. It might not be that high, but 25, 30 buildings, a lot of jumping pumpkins. And considering these require population and quite a lot of them, uh, you're probably not able to place that much more than 20, 30 of them. Now in Space Age Titan, 30 of these buildings will cost over 600,000 population. Uh, now if you're like me, uh, I can almost afford that on my main world. I have 550 population. Uh, and I think with a bit of effort, I could potentially get that a little bit higher. Um, if you are in a lower age, you can see the requirement in Bronze Age is a lot lower. Uh, only only 10,000, quote-unquote. Uh, but in lower ages, you have the likes of Innovation Tower. Innovation Tower at level 80 provides uh, 44,000, I think, population. Which is a lot considering what you need for this. So... Basically what I'm saying is that I think pretty much everybody should be able to place at least 20 or 30 of these in your city. Uh, and that's really all you need to complete the event quest. So, after not a lot of time, let's say a year, you should be able to replace all your blacksmiths with these. Uh, and all you need to do that from the event is to get the main building fully leveled. Uh, and to get the main building fully leveled, you only need to get it to level 9. So what I'm saying is that if you're a little bit patient, uh, and I don't really see much need in going for the event passes for them, if you're a little bit patient, you will get a lot of these over time. And considering that you can, base, uh, that you can replace uh, blacksmiths with them, and they're a lot better than blacksmiths, um, I think they're a really, really good, uh, <laughs> good building to get. So... Yeah, that's my main takeaway from these buildings. This is a really good building. Um, actually, well, you might think <laughs> this is a lot of buildings. Uh, we have looked at five of them already. Well, there are still one more building. We have the uh, Grape Stumpin Festival level 1 and level 2. So if you land in uh, Gold League in Starbaker, you will get the level 2 building directly. If you land in silver, you will get the uh, level 1 building directly. Uh, there are no upgrades uh, from this event, as far as I can tell. So if you get the level 1 building, uh, you might be able to upgrade it next year. I don't know. Uh, but these buildings are basically the same as the, uh, I think the last two events now, uh, have had in, in the leagues there, uh, a building that provides uh, fragments for the selection kit, 
Uh, and in this case, you can see both of the uh, upgrade kits, so the silver and uh, golden upgrade kit for the main building. It also gives up to, I believe it is, uh, uh, up to 30, oh no, never mind, it's a fixed amount. So 30 fixed attack for attacking the army, so it does not depend on your age. And the building itself is 3 by 2, so that is 5 attack per tile. Um, yeah, 5 attack per tile, which is definitely uh, very nice. Um, also nice that you can get the uh, or can get selection kits for uh, the main building. So you get 20 per day. Uh, you need... Oh, I don't want to do this live, but uh, let me pull up the calculator. So you get... Or in total, you need 150 fragments times... Oh, I messed up there. You need 150 fragments uh, and you need 11 of them to get a full building. If you get 20 per day, that means you need roughly 82 days. So two and a half, three months, roughly around there uh, to get an additional main building from this, uh, from the level two building here. And then double that for the level one building. So definitely nice, um, definitely nice if you want to get it. But, uh, but yeah, it does require you to land in the top two leagues. Um, we also have a golden upgrade for the sunflower. Uh, it gets some more attack, so up to 37% attack. The building itself is 24 tiles, so that's definitely respectable. Um, and it also gets some higher boost here. So if you have it in your city, definitely it, it will definitely be nice to upgrade it. Uh, but yeah, not really that big of a deal compared to all of the new buildings you can get. Whew. Okay, I think that's enough talk about the rewards. Uh, you do have daily specials, uh, including the fall event, a uh, fall set sh uh, should be available. Uh, you have the epic fall selection kits, which include, uh, actually it probably should include the, yeah, it includes the fall set, for example. Uh, September Cottage, <laughs> nice one from earlier ages. Cider Mill, uh, which you can replace the new, uh, with the new pumpkins. Um, so yeah. That's the daily specials. Okay, let's talk about mechanics and how it works. Well, it is based on the uh, fall event, as you can, uh, uh, sorry, the wildlife event, as you can see, uh, with the Candy Crush-like uh, mini game. Let's, go, let's get through the tutorial. It works exactly the same. You pop these blocks. If there are five or more, you get a chest, which in this case is, is a jar. Uh, and then you also have coffee mugs um, yeah, you have coffee mugs that you can get down uh, to get uh, progress towards the grand prices. All right, so one thing you might notice is that we have, I believe, I'm pretty sure, only four of these uh, four of these different colors. So uh, we have uh, blue, purplish, purple, uh, green, orange, and pink. Uh, in wildlife, we have five. So this means that it should be easier to play this event compared to that. Um, let me let me get some rewards down. So it should be easier. Uh, now we also have some uh, different uh, boosters there. Uh, the fork, uh, yeah, the fork here is the same uh, as in the uh, as the hammer in the wildlife event. However, these two are. A little bit simpler. So the spatula here will remove a complete uh, row and the rolling pin will remove a full column, uh, which I think actually is better than we what we have. Especially this one will be very nice if you have a lot of uh, rewards stuck here uh, on the row above. You can use it here to break all of these and it will drop all of them below. So I think especially the spatula will be very nice to have. Uh, now to get them, um, 12.30, I feel like that is slightly lower than the wildlife event, but don't quote me on it. But yeah, to get more of them, you do have to use uh, sacks of flour. Uh, you also use sacks of flour to buy additional moves at the end of a game. Uh, so I think for the most part, you will stick with the free boosters. But uh, who knows, it might be worth considering going for a few of these, and I think especially the spatula will be the most important one. 
Um, anyways, let me just quickly end uh, this game here. I'm not going to spend a lot of try, uh, time trying to optimize anything. Let me see. Uh, yeah, let me get the... I can get all of these down. There we go to more coffee mugs for five in total. Probably not going to get one more. Or perhaps I will have one up here, which... Uh, I don't think I can get down now. So let me just uh, do some random popping of blocks. Yeah, not quite. Almost, but uh, but yeah, not quite. And I'm, I'm not going to bother with uh, any tools or anything. I could use that, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, because uh, there is one more change or one more addition uh, compared to last time. So if I end the level... I can uh, spend 65 to continue playing, that's the same. But if I end it here at the top here, you have wooden spoons, which are the normal uh, tickets. You also have a golden spoon here. And the golden spoon, you get, I believe it is three of them from... Okay, so you get one here uh, after five quests from the milestones. And later on, you also get two more after completing 45 quests. Uh, speaking of which, there are two uh, quest lines, uh, parallel quest lines, which are uh, nice. Uh, the fall event has had that usually, but it seems to start at the first quest. But uh, but yeah, so here you can get uh, three golden spoons, and beyond that, uh, you can get one golden spoon here in the fall prices. Um, only one, it seems, which uh, I I like. I, I think that's nice that it's only one and not more. Uh, but I'm not sure if you can see it here. Yeah, here you can see that you also have a very small chance of getting it from the daily challenge every day. So you have a 2% chance uh, the event is 30 days long. So in practice, that probably means you'll get uh, none or perhaps one of them during the event. Probably not uh, that many. You will have like a 40% chance, combined chance or something like that to get one. So... So yeah, most likely you will not get a lot of them. I and mean, personally, I don't like that they are available here because I don't think it should be down to chance how many of those you get. Anyways, what these golden spoons are, uh, it basically means that you can start as many games as you want without having to spend any tickets. Uh, which means that if you... Oh, that means that you can start a game, you can click as fast as you can to try to get as much as uh, down. It doesn't matter how efficient you are, but once you're done... You can start another game and you have this active for five minutes so within five minutes you can start as many games as you want to so what i want to do to end out this video is to activate it and see how much i'm able to complete with it active and what i'm going to be aiming for uh, i think is to get the coffee mugs um actually one, let's do one quick thing so uh, we get one uh, upgrade here uh, so we get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you need to get to 280 progress uh, or 280 uh, uh, coffee mugs in order to get the main building. Um, which I think should be fairly easy. I think that was the target uh, for the wildlife event. Uh, and I think that was quite easy as well. I'll do the math later on, but nice to have that in mind. Okay. So, I will activate it, it will last for 5 minutes, and uh, I can't promise that I will comment it, uh, or that my commenting will, be, will make a lot of sense, uh, but let's just give it a go. I'm starting with 5 collected, actually, uh, 5 collected coffee mugs, and how many uh, points? 5,000 points, roughly. So, let's see how much we can get with one golden spoon. Okay, start. Wow, that's a big one. No thinking, let's just get that one down. Okay, so let's drop that one. I can get a big, actually not that big of a chest, but if I drop those, I can get a big chest there. Uh, chest there, chest there. I can get a chest here. I think actually the biggest time sink would be just the animation to get everything down. Uh, I'm looking to see if I can get that one down. I don't think so, so I will just ignore it because I can always start a new game. Can I get this one down easily? Perhaps. Let's give it a go. Uh, 
I don't think so. No, let's ignore that. Okay, let's go for this coffee mug here. That is easy, so I can get that one down. Uh, let's get the chest here. Oh, we can get another one up there. So I can drop that one down, get another big chest as well. Okay, let's activate that. I've spent one minute so far. So I'm guessing I can start uh, three or perhaps four games in the time here. Okay, so another chest there. Six more moves. Get the chest here. And I think I'll just uh, pop some random blocks. Don't think I'll get uh, too much more out of this game. All right, there we go. So I can now end the level and start a new one completely free without having to pay anything extra. So that's the big <laughs> reason why this is such a good thing. Uh, you can use it as fast as you're, as you're able to click. Okay. Now, am I able to get anything good out of this? I'm able to get uh, this one down as well. I can pop it there and there. Okay, can I get this one down? Uh, possibly. It might be a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, we got one of the daily specials. Um, yeah, so I can get that one, that one, and I'm actually able to get this po uh, this uh, <laughs> this coffee mug down as well, which is nice. All right, I've now spent uh, two a little bit over two minutes, so I don't have too much time. Can I get anything good there? I can get the big chest here. Can I get it down though? I can. All right, nice. We can get a big chest here as well. Let's get a chest up there. And there, <laughs> we can get the big one here as well with the yellow ones. And yeah, uh, the fact that there are uh, fewer of the... I think I get all of this on, yeah. Uh, the fact that there are fewer colors as well, uh, one fewer colors, means that there's a lot more... or It's a lot easier to get things down as well, uh, which makes the golden ticket even better. Okay, so we have two minutes left. So I think I'm able to start two more games, because I only need to start it before the time runs out. This one looks a little bit tricky. But yeah, I can get these two down. We can create some big chests. <laughs> there, another big chest there. Okay, so a lot of chests at least, not a lot of uh, coffee mugs, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I don't think I can get too much more, but what I want to do... I think I want to try to... Hmm, I, I don't know if I'm going to get the one game in one minute, but I'll try. Okay, so now... Let's see if I can complete one game in uh, in under a minute. Uh, it's going to be challenging, but I'll give it a go. Uh, because if I do, then I should be able to start the next game as well. <laughs> Again, the main thing is the animation. It takes a long time for these animations to complete. Um, mm, and I also need to click <laughs> cancel on everything. Uh, but I think what I could try is to avoid the animation uh, completely by, yeah, by not <laughs> letting things drop all the way down. Like that. So 10 more moves. Ooh, that's a little bit risky. Ah, okay, so let's see if I'm able to... Don't think I'm able to complete this in the time. Let's try. No, I'm not able to. <laughs> okay, so a little bit risky, but yeah. What I wanted to try to complete it before the time ran out and try to start one more game. That wasn't successful, but, uh, but yeah, I can at least get, I guess, a chest down there and another chest here. So, all right, so with that, and let's end that. So, with that golden ticket, uh, I was able to complete or get 18 coffee mugs. Uh, I didn't really pay attention to daily specials. Uh, I have three daily specials. Uh, I don't know how many of those I got. I think I got all of them on the um, final game. I'm not quite sure, but 
three tailing pencils, I think, and uh, a little bit under, just under 20 uh, coffee mugs, which is quite a lot. So, uh, considering we have three of these, perhaps uh, with a bit more practice, perhaps that will be, I don't know, 10 daily specials perhaps, and 60, uh, 60 coffee mugs, which is definitely not bad at all. Uh, so yeah, that's the new golden spoon. Otherwise, the mechanics are the same, uh, except for the uh, um, boosters. Um, in terms of buying, I think that's the same as well. So yeah, that is the full event. I would love to hear what you think. Uh, I think it looks uh, really cool. I like this event mechanic, but uh, I know not everybody does. Uh, but I think this one will be easier and uh, nicer to play than the wild event, mainly due to the fact that you only have four colors there instead of five. I think that's a big deal, actually. So, overall, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, we will, will, of course, have to see how things change on... Uh, on beta, if things get nerfed, for example, and see how things uh, develop. Uh, but so far, I'm quite excited and, yeah, looking forward to learn more. Okay, that's it for this video. But before I end, let me thank my Patreons for their support. I would like to thank Homestar, Lorden, Kim Kelly, Rolf the Eighth, Dan Suminad, Chanti, Hecate, Dark Matter, Mylia, Zero K, Merrick B, Hugo Count von Count, Truth the Genovis, Susan Weiss, Rocco, Spike from No Remorse, Martin Amis, Atomic, Travis the Avenger, Arkler, Jibber, Whiskey Meister, Moran Sir, Henrik der Erklerberg, Adaril, Mike, Operative Sass, Ruth, Karen, Dennis, Flavis Belisarius, Stampe, Pudger, Misiak77, Niklas, Mike So, Michael, and Early Morning. Thanks a lot for your support, thanks for watching, take care, and I will see you in the future.